All right, welcome, welcome, welcome everybody. Thanks for joining us today. Um, as Hilda stated before, if you attend this session, you don't need to attend sixth or seventh grade because it is the same thing. Um, to get us started this morning, the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to hear from Mr. Lukey. And I need to make sure that I forgot to, I always forget to check that box. Share my sound. There we go. Okay. So here's a message from Mr. Lukey. Good morning and welcome to Summer Virtual Institute. I appreciate and thank all of you for joining us uh, this week. Um, and willing to learn with us as we lean into a new year of learning um, with our students. Uh, this is not the instructional program that we had hoped to accomplish this year in terms of our students starting the year in a virtual format. Um, but I believe that together we will build a strong instructional program to support um, the students of our district. So I want to speak a little bit about the importance of uh, this week's learning with respect to our instructional program um, and emphasize a couple of key points for us before we start today. Um, first and foremost, I'd like to emphasize the importance of understanding what the state is requiring of school districts this year and that there are a set uh, number of instructional minutes that we must adhere to. It is our goal that through the virtual nature of our instructional program over the first quarter, um, that we can rise above and beyond uh, those minimum minutes, ensuring that our students receive ample in um, person to the best of our ability instruction, meaning synchronous learning, where we are zooming in um, with our students um, online, uh, supporting them, teaching them, equipping them with the skills to be successful in this virtual format. And then we are also balancing that with what we call asynchronous time, where we are assigning kids um, uh, to complete assignments through many of our instructional tools and resources, while we as teachers and educators work in small groups with students um, who simply need more time um, with intervention. And so you are going to receive a lot of information from our uh, ed instructional services support team. Um, you are going to receive a lot of tools and resources to support you uh, with the instructional design of our uh, program for this year. Uh, just know that we're in this together. Uh, let's support each other. Uh, let's be there for each other. And let's work together to make the very best and strongest instructional program for our students. So once again, thank you very much. I look forward to learning with you this week. And I look forward to a successful school year. Thank you. All right. So... The material you're going to see today and what's going to be presented to you has been a collective effort um, by the individuals you see here on the screen and others. Um, and it's represented by Cato, Sequoia, uh, Cato, Sequoia, Martin Luther King or MLK, uh, Compton, uh, Hilda, the district office, Stern. Um, we all worked tirelessly for many hours. Um, so hopefully this is beneficial for you and we're, our hope is that you can take this and um, be successful in your distance learning adventure with your students. Here's an overview of our agenda for today. Um, we're going to do introductions next, then we're going to discuss the math behaviors. We're going to spend a little bit of time with the key essential standards. We're going to look at the lesson design uh, that has been created. We're going to talk um, about the EdTech Center and all of the wonderful tools that they have provided for us. And then at the end, you will be getting an exit ticket, um, which will be a sign out sheet uh, as well as an evaluation. And you do need to stay for the duration of the session in order to get credit, get that money. Um, as Hilda said, we are recording all of our sessions for the opportunity to see them at a later date. Um, we do ask that you stay muted um, unless we ask for questions um, or ask you to engage, which we will. 
if you have a question, you can put it in the chat. If it's something that you think is for the greater good of everyone, you can unmute yourself. You're an adult um, and share with the, with the uh, collective. Um, so please use the chat for questions um, or just unmute yourself and ask questions. Please be patient. Be patient with yourself, um, especially. Be patient with us. Be patient with the district office. Be patient with your students. Uh, this is new learning for every single one of us. This is uh, an adventure and it's going to uh, have a lot of turns and a lot of mountains and a lot of different obstacles that we're going to face, um, but we're in this together. And so just be patient and be kind, be positive, be uplifting. Um, this is all new guys. And we're learning as we go. You're gonna be learning as you go. So just be positive, stay, stay positive as much as you can. Um, there's a lot going on in today's world that we don't have any control over. <laughs> um, and then we do ask if you, if you would please to show your video, just as you're going to have expectations of your students um, when you are working with them virtually and you're going to wanna to see their faces and you're going to want them to engage and interact, we do ask that you would turn your video on. Obviously, if you need to use the restroom or do something like that, then you can obviously mute, uh, Put your video on mute. Can you come get the dog, please? Sorry, my dog got out. Um, so we are on our adventure. Um, as I said, there will be a link that we will put in the chat the last 10 minutes. Uh, one will be for signing out, that's how you will get paid. And the other will be for the evaluation for the session. If you have any questions, any concerns, um, Anything that you just need uh, some clarity on, please feel free to go to the parking lot and ask those questions. Uh, Hilda and I will do our best to answer questions that we are able to answer, uh, but every day is new learning, as we said earlier. So there may be questions that you ask that we don't have an answer to that are great questions. So please, 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 we encourage you to use that parking lot. All right, so we are gonna have some fun here. Uh, this is a really cool activity that you could use with your students. Uh, I personally like this one because it provides the opportunity for us to get to know each other a little bit better. And it's very low risk, which for our ELD students and for our students who maybe are not extroverts, um, and are not super outgoing and they're more on the shy side, this provides them an opportunity to engage um, with very little risk involved. So I'm going to click on the link and Hilda will provide you the link in the chat. And we're going to go this is our third session. So here's how this works. I'm going to walk you through how to do it. And then I'm going to give you a couple of minutes to uh, do it yourself. So you're going to go over to the left hand side of the page and you're going to find the sticky note and you're going to click it. Once you click it, it opens up the window for you to create a sticky note. Pick the color you would like. Blue's my favorite color. So I'm going with blue. So hi. I'm Brandy Hamilton. I am the apple at Stern Middle School. Um, I have been, or I have worked for BCSD for 16 years. I'm going on year number 17. And then we, so you're going to introduce yourself, tell us what you do, what site you're at, how long you've been with BCSD, and it's perfectly okay if you're new to BCSD. That's cool. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We're happy to have you. And then one thing that makes you happy. So my family and spending 
time with them makes me happy. Okay. And then when I'm done, I'm going to click save and it's going to create my post-it note. And then I can make it a little bit bigger so everybody can read it and I can move it. So right now I would like you guys to take two minutes and create your post-it, please. Make sure that you are on three of seven. I forgot to mention that part. So the previous two slides are from, did Michael get kicked out? What happened to him? Thank you everyone for having your video on. Much appreciated. We like to see your faces. <laughs> so as I've provided for you some wait time, it's gonna be very important that when we are walking our th students through a lesson that we also provide them with that wait time, which I already struggle with wait time in the classroom. I'm gonna to be totally transparent here. Um, so it's very challenging for me to do the wait time at home um, through a computer. So you may want to use your cell phone, set yourself a timer, just do something to keep yourself from jumping in and not giving them enough time to work because we want them to have enough time to process and think about things. Randy, how do we move our sticky note if we're on page one to move it to page three? So that's a great question, Erin. So I'm going to go to page one and I'm going to show you how you can do that. Because Hilda taught me the other day. Let me find yours, Erin. There you are. So I'm going to, I'm going to click on it and then I'm going to hit control C, which will copy it. And then I'm going to go to screen three and I'm going to click and hit control V and it pasted it. Oh, fabulous, thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you for modeling. <laughs> so something to take into consideration with Jamboard is you do have the ability, and the kids will too, to go in and edit somebody else's work. So, just keep that in mind. That is one of the, the <clears throat> I guess it's not a downfall, but because then they could work together on a problem or something. Um, but just, I just want you to know that and be aware of that. Janelle, I'm gonna put you right here. I'm gonna make Candace a little bit smaller, make you a little bit bigger. So, Hopefully most of you have yours up here. Joan, we're gonna put you right here. All right, so I just wanted to take a minute and just kind of share what people put. Uh, Surema put, what makes her happy is vacationing. Me too, girl, and I've been dying because vacationing is not happening right now. Me too. Me too. Um, dance parties in my kitchen with my family make me happy. I love you, Rosie. That's awesome. Yes. Dance parties are always fun. Joan is moving to a new campus this year. She's going to Chipman. That's exciting. 
And something that makes her happy is spending time with her family. Where did you go in the north, Joan? Sorry, watch while you're drinking. Sorry. You gotta unmute yourself. You're still muted, sweetie. Let me see if I can unmute her. Okay. I'm gonna, no, I can't. It's okay, why don't you put it in the chat? Oh, there you go. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. I went to North Carolina to see my daughter, Katie. Oh, nice. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Very nice. Um, that's exciting. And Hilda, right now, she's happy when she is cooking, and she keeps telling me that. So I think I'm going to have to, like, make her put some food out on the porch for me so that I can come get some. <laughs> um, Misty put, she loves spending time with her grandchildren. She has beautiful grandchildren. Uh, Candice. Whoa. But who's this? Who this be? That is really big. <laughs> Candice, um, you are a new teacher. BCSD for seven years, six of those is an aide at Eisler and since December. Nice. Very nice, Candice. Welcome, welcome. Hornbaugh, Jennifer put, I love spending time with my family. Hornbaugh loves to vacation too. She's hiding it. Brooke, um, I'm happy when I'm snuggling and watching a movie with my family. Yes, yes, good times. Um, Haley will be at Emerson, seventh and eighth grade math. Oh, you taught at Thompson Junior High from Panama Buena Vista. You love to be, okay, so that's another thing I wanna to mention to you about Jamboard is Jamboard will cut you off after so many characters. Um, so Haley, if you wanna take a minute and unmute yourself and just tell us what do you love to be? We uh, I just love to be spontaneous and adventurous. Nice, yeah. nice. <laughs> so adventure makes you happy. Yes. <laughs> Very cool. Gabe, what up Gabe? Um, music makes Gabe happy. Gabe does love his music. I agree with that. And Janelle, I love going to the beach or hanging out with my family. Yes, yes, those are all great options. Gina, I'm happy when I'm able to travel. Me too, girl. Erin, her dog, Minnie, cute little Minnie. Yes, doggies make me happy too. Although mine's kind of a nutcase. Um, Jimmy. Happy when your students have success. Yes, I love that. That's awesome. So <clears throat> do you see how Jamboard could be used to kind of interact for your students to get to know each other as well as for you to get to know your students? Um, you could also use, I believe Hilda's told us before, you could also use Jamboard as a whiteboard. Um, there are tools over here to write. And I'm just using my mouse. So you can write, um, you can add pictures, it looks like. So lots of different options with Jamboard. So it can kind of serve as, you can erase, you kind of can serve as a whiteboard. So definitely a tool to consider the possibility of using with your students. Does anyone know the anyone? amount of characters that it cuts off at? Um, I did not pay attention to that, Gabe. I do see there's a blue line down here. So, I mean, I would have to go in and like physically count how many characters I have. I'm sure that the spaces are included in the characters, but once this bar gets all the way over, it will just cut you off. There will be more information about Jamboard on our EdTech Center on our website. Um, you'll have um, math examples on there, um, you know, kinder through eighth grade. And if you have some, we'd love to for you to share. Um, example, yesterday I uploaded an open number line. And so an activity I'm going to be doing is uh, the sticky note. When they go in, the participants go in, they're going to get a sticky note and put one number on there. And then they're going to take that sticky note and place it on the number line. And because you can kind of move them around, it's really nice and interactive. Um, so there's just, you can do just about 
anything with this Jamboard? Yeah, so good questions, Gabe. Thank you. All right. So again, our goal today is to show you several different options of things that you can utilize with your students uh, during distance learning. Hill, um, is this you, Hilda? Probably, I'll do it. Yes. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, I was just reading a chat. I was reading um, Michael. Michael, were you able to get on? Hilda, do you Michael. want me to stop sharing and then you can share? Um, it doesn't matter. Um, let me okay. see. I just want to make sure. Yeah, Michael's there. Okay. All right. Yeah, I'll share. So hi, everyone. Okay. Um, we're good. Okay. So you gave me permission to share? Yes, ma'am. Okay. I did. All right. So um, let me see if I can pull these slides back up. Um, let's see. All right. Give me just a second. All right. Um, do you guys see um, my screen? Okay. Yeah. Do you also see my faces, like the, the people I have? I'm just wondering if it's in the way. Hold on. It's put not. It down low. It's okay. off to the side. You're okay. Okay. Sometimes I can't tell. All right. So anyways, um, so the first thing um, I get to talk about a little bit is the core priorities. Um, I know that you've seen these many times as you've come to any of our professional developments, um, trainings, or just meetings. And really, um, we want to emphasize how important these are to us as a district as we run this business of education, that it's really at the core of what we believe, what we value, and nothing has changed. Even though we're doing virtual learning um, at this point, we still believe and value all four of our core priorities. And so as you move on with this journey and walk through this journey with all of us, know that we're still focused on teaching and learning. We're still learning. Uh, we're still focused on building a strong culture, a culture of self-efficacy, as well as collective efficacy. Um, we're still focused around access and equity and student-centered schools. So I'm hoping that as we move forward, you will know that those are the things that we have kept at the forefront, regardless of this new adventure. Um, so for today, our learning intention is that um, we want you to understand the lesson design components and purpose for math instruction um, that continues to promote a balanced approach and um, math behaviors of our students. <clears throat> Um, by today, um, we're hoping that when you leave us, you are able to navigate and deliver rich math instruction that will promote math learning, belief, and behaviors where students can still strive, uh, thrive in mathematics regardless of the environment and setting. So that is our hope for today. With that said, we're going to move right into the math behavior. So if you were with us last summer, we introduced um, this idea of math behaviors. Now, the math behaviors are not new. They came along with our standards. They are the mathematical practices that you hear so much about. Um, but what we did last summer is we tried to condense them and bullet the, the items that we felt were most relevant out of those very, very long paragraphs, um, but of course not limiting. So just a reminder, when it comes to the math behaviors, these are behaviors that we want to instill in our students, and we also want them to be able to internalize them in such a way that those behaviors carry on with them to other subject areas and ultimately to career, college, and civic life. So if you just look, for example, mathematical practice number one, um, when we think about the behaviors there, we're talking about perseverance. And if you just stop and think about perseverance and how important it is for us to persevere in this life, just in general, you can do that through mathematics. That's what's so beautiful. You can give students a challenging problem that they have to struggle a little, um, but they're gonna persevere and find different pathways and problem solve. And again, all those things I just listed are part of mathematical practice number one. 
you'll problem solve. You're gonna find a different pathway. If something doesn't work, that you don't give up, you try some other way. And so that's just an example for you, just number one. Um, and again, these are behaviors that will carry with our students forever, more than if they can remember scientific notation forever, you know? So with that said, I want you guys to think about these math behaviors. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put a link in the chat for you. I will be linking everything in the chat. It's probably easier than you having to look at the presentation. Um, so we'll link everything in the chat that you need for today. But I want you to look at these math behaviors. You can skim them or focus in on just one and that's fine. Um, and then I'm gonna send you to a Padlet, okay? If you've never used Padlet, it's similar to our Jamboard we just used. You're gonna go in and you're going to um, add a comment on what things have you either done, um, have you seen, or have you read that allow for these math behaviors to flourish, you know, to, to draw them out. What is it that you've done or you've seen or you've read? There are already some responses in there from our last group. Um, I left them in there just so that way you can see others' examples or others' ideas. So um, if we can, <clears throat> and Randy, I don't know, if, did you happen to put the math behaviors I, in the chat? So I, I just put the Padlet in and then I will put the math behaviors in as well. Okay, the perfect. And then I also put the presentation for you guys. So the presentation link is in there as well. Okay, so why don't you have a chance to look at those math behaviors? I'll just quickly model using the Padlet. So when you come into the Padlet, <clears throat> all right, you will see some other responses and that's okay. Uh, we deleted, we've been deleting them, but then we realized, you know, let's leave them so that way others can have a chance to see what good things are happening. Um, but once you get in here at the very bottom right, you'll see a plus sign. You can go ahead and click on that and you'll have a, in the left hand corner, I'm guessing for everyone, you'll have a section where you can write, okay? So I'm going to just start typing. Um, um, I have kids um, share their thinking with each other and justify their solutions. So that's one way I'm going to promote or allow for these math behaviors to flourish is by allowing our students to have an opportunity to communicate their thinking and justifying solutions. So then I just hit, um, if you hit enter, you'll move on down, but if you just click anywhere on this, uh, anywhere on the Padlet, it will take your response, or I believe you can do control enter And maybe that's from a different, well, just click off to the side and then you'll, um, it'll be there for everyone to see, okay? And if you wanna go back and delete it or edit it, you can just click on the three dots. You can edit, you can also change the color of your response, which would be fine if you'd like to do that and try a few things, okay? So I'm gonna give you about five minutes and then we'll just check back with everyone, but I do wanna respect your wait time. So about five minutes and then we'll bring everyone back. And if you do it in a, on a different color, I'd appreciate it. That way we can just distinguish between this group and the other.
Yes, Candace changed it to purple. I like it. One nice thing about Padlet too is you can comment on somebody else's comment. So if you're done and you want to try that out, um, I would try that. I'm going to go to Rosie. She says, encourage students to find more than one way to solve a problem. I can go in then and comment to Rosie's comment and say, you know, I love this because there really isn't just one way to problem solve. There are many strategies. So if you want to try that out, you can. And it looks like it kept the blue color, but just a little lighter so you could tell it was a, a response. Hilda, can you tell me again how I um, changed the color? I've been trying and I can't find it. So you should have three dots um, in the corner of your box, your text box. Do you see three little dots? The upper right hand corner? Mm. I have one in the bottom right hand corner. Uh, but that, it, okay. I, I think you I think you have to get out of the like post it and then you can change the color. Okay. Oh yes. That's that might be it. Yeah. Oh, Click okay. off of it. Yes. Oh. Okay. Thank you, Gabe. Thank you. Okay, so hopefully most of you have had an opportunity to use um the Padlet and give your comment. Um, just, I just want to say a few things. What you'll notice is that you can either write your name or leave it anonymous. And I think that those serve good purposes um, because sometimes you might just want some anonymous responses. And then sometimes if you want a name, they can put their name in the title section. Um, hoping that you also notice that you can um, comment here uh, to someone's response, which will also allow for some collaboration or just communication amongst students and amongst yourselves. So um, throughout this presentation, we really wanted to show you a few tools and resources that you can take back and use in the classroom with your students. So yes, the content we're talking about today is important. The math behaviors are so, so, so critical. Um, and with that, we also want to show you some tools like Jamboard and Padlet that you can take back. So I hope that uh, just keep that in mind as we're going through the presentation that all our moves that we're doing today are also to support the work that you're going to do in the classroom. Okay. Um, so I'm not going to read all of these, but I mean, definitely come back here at any time and just look at the Hilda, ideas. Your that people volume's are... like in and out. Oh, okay. Can you hear me now? <laughs> okay. It's been a little sketchy today and I apologize. Um, I tried to jump on a different laptop, but the camera wasn't working. Okay, just keep me posted, Brandy. If not, okay. I'll let you take over. If not, I'll let you take over. Um, okay. But I see that Erin wrote that she has students write down the process that they use to solve math problem in words. And that's, that's perfect because we wanna promote the use of writing and language and thinking and processing time, especially. So thank you for sharing, Erin. Um, 
I see this one's an anonymous person, but they said, I have students show their work in more than one way and provide reasoning as to how they came up with their methods. Again, another great way to promote the use of math behaviors um, that students um, can show multiple ways. When students can show multiple ways, it really supports their conceptual understanding of mathematics and providing that reasoning, which we do want them to justify and give reasoning because it's gonna help build their voice in such a way that, again, in real life, they'll be able to use that voice to provide reasoning and justify, so. All right, well, thank you guys for sharing. Again, I wish we had time to read all of these and discuss every single one. But again, another way to share ideas, everyone can see them and read them. Hilda, it's breaking up pretty bad. Okay. Um, can everyone hear me now? Sorry, friend. <laughs> okay, no, 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 don't be sorry. These, this, is, this is our reality, so it's, it's okay. Um, so I'm going to move us, and Brandy, if, if I happen to get too choppy, uh, let me know again, but we're yeah, going to be putting really you choppy. in. Yeah, it's really choppy. All right, do you want to lead this at all? Put him into I, the breakout rooms? Oh, you can hear her fine, Rosie? Okay, so it could be my internet then. <clears throat> oh, so can I get a thumbs up? Can you hear me okay? okay? Go then. Yes, okay. All right, I'm gonna keep going. All right. So I'm gonna go back to sharing my screen. Okay, so I'm not sure who was able to attend last month, our um, PD around eliciting student thinking. Maybe some of you were there. I, I remember some of you were able to attend. And we just wanted to highlight how important it is for us to keep in mind that we still want to elicit student thinking. We still wanna gather evidence to see um, what our student strengths are, what their weaknesses are, what their needs are. I should say, um, because even in a virtual setting, we may think we're not able to, but we really, really have an abundance of resources that will allow you to um, grab that understanding, whether it's a Flipgrid. That was what we had focused on during our session last month, was how to use Flipgrid so the kids can explain and show you their thinking, and then you can give feedback. So there was some really, again, powerful tools and resources that are available to you so that you can continue to elicit their understanding, okay? Um, so that was just a quick reminder, not gonna spend much time on this slide, but I just wanted to give it to you as a resource. What are teachers doing? What are students doing? And then the link to Principles to Action is there. So if you click on that picture, you'll have access to the PDF file of that book, which as math teachers, as math professionals, that's a one book you definitely want to have available. All right, so moving on, um, I'm going to move over to the um, Key Essential Standards document. Um, one of the first things we were tasked with this summer, and it was the first thing we were tasked with, was taking the standards, looking at the standards, and then um, just kind of laying them out for the year. and I don't want to give you too much because you're going to go in and you're going to notice things about the document, okay? But uh, this will be referred to as a key essential standard document. We know that in mathematics, we have uh, major standards and, and additional and supporting standards. And so we don't always use the terminology key essential standards in mathematics because honestly, they're all very important and every single one of them um, prepares our students for the next level of math. So what we're gonna do right now is put you into breakout sessions. And if you've never done a breakout, uh, it's really kind of nice and it's kind of fun. Basically, I'm taking you from the larger group that you are in and I'm gonna put you into smaller Zoom rooms. Okay, and when you're in your small Zoom room, you can act like a host, which means you can share your screen, um, 
And that's really what you might want to use when I break you into um, the breakout rooms today. We're also going to use breakout rooms a little bit later when you engage in the mathematics. Um, so I'm going to put you into breakout rooms. You're going to, uh, the link will be in the chat. Once you get it's to already the there. link, it's like a 50 page document. We bookmarked it so it takes you automatically to math. Okay, but if for some reason it doesn't, you're probably going to have to scroll down about 25 pages to get to math. Sorry, but they should be bookmarked for you. Um, once you're there, we're just asking that in your breakout room, you just kind of look at the document. What, what do you see? What do you notice? Have a few, little few discussions. And I'm going to let you do that for five minutes. I'll bring you back from the breakout rooms. Um, you'll get a one minute countdown. Okay, so when you're in the breakout room, oh, I should warn you. We can jump around in the breakout room. So don't be surprised if we pop in and we're like, hi guys, just wanted to say hi. And then we'll pop out and then pop back in, okay? So let me um, get you there so you can get started with this. Um, give me a second. Brandy, yes. can you do me a favor and can you look at the participants list? Um, Right now, you're the host. Can you make me the host really quick? I'm a co-host, but can you click on me and just make me, oh wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. I did. Hold on, okay. I'm trying to make your, I'm trying to make my breakout rooms, but, okay. I can't make the breakout rooms unless I'm the host. So here we go. So I'm gonna put you into breakout rooms again. Like I said, we're gonna, gonna kind of jump in there. The uh, document's in the chat. Go yep. ahead and take a peek at it and see what you notice. All right, here we go. Um, let's see how many of us are there. Um, all right, I think I'm gonna make five breakout rooms. And this just takes me a little second to get that prepped and ready. Give you a 60 second countdown. All right, here we go.
Was this a first for anybody in a breakout room? Yes. No. Okay. No. No. Looks like most of you have been in a breakout room. Maybe a few of you, it was new. Okay. <laughs> We're going to use it again in a little bit, um, but it's definitely one of our favorite features. And I wasn't able to jump into breakout room one, but I tried to peek in and, and see all of you. Um, and I definitely love that feature as well. Okay, so let's start with breakout room number one. Um, Brandy, Candace, Erin, and Haley. And I know I didn't ask you to pick a spokesperson, but if any of you can just tell us what you discussed. And again, we're really practicing our wait time. So I'll just let anybody speak you guys can unmute yourselves we talked about uh, is this, sorry <laughs> Minnie, you have great timing girl <laughs> Aaron. We, we talked you're fine about, it's getting worse somebody else has to do it okay Haley, do you want to go Sure. We okay. talked about how we we're going to start out with the ratios and proportional <laughs> relationships. That was the first thing that we noticed as a group about it was that was kind of new just because of last year, how it left off. Um, it was more of a review. And then we also talked about how there was a difference between um, the standards, how they were black and blue and how the blue was the additional supporting standards. So, um, yeah. <laughs> Good yeah, job. I'm glad you brought that up because a couple of rooms brought it up as well. And the additional and supporting standards, um, it's like you're going to have to make some decisions. And we were basically in a situation where we don't really know how things are going to work. And so if we find that, you know, it's, it's really hard, you know, instructionally, and we can only get through so much content because of X, Y, Z, um, that if something, if you have to make those hard decisions, right? Sometimes it's like, what do I, what are kids going to learn and what they're not going to learn? Well, we don't want to skip any of our major standards. Those are all in black and blues are the additional and supporting. But when you look at the blues, you also can't skip all the blues either. I mean, when you look at those, cause we did, we looked at it with teachers and they said, Hilda, how, there's no way we could skip this and this. So you're, you're just gonna have to be creative. Um, sometimes we're gonna have to give mini lessons. Um, sometimes we're gonna have to integrate and incorporate them where they might live nicely within another standard. Um, and then sometimes you may have to make those tough decisions where, you know, this just may not be something they're gonna learn this year, okay? Um, but we want to give you the autonomy. We still included them. They are there. They're delineated by color. And then again, we won't know and you won't, none of us will know until we get in here and start teaching and kids start learning what decisions we have to make. So I just wanted to um, make that statement with the blue versus the black writing standards. All right. Uh, breakout room two, Christy, Jennifer, Carrie, and Ms. Rosie. Guys, have anything to add? We kind of talked about that it seemed like the the pacing was a little bit slower, that they had more time to um, kind of work on the concepts that were being taught. Yeah, and I would agree that it's a little more spread out. It feels that way. Um, and we want, again, to reiterate that um, with your autonomy, if your kids have mastered some of this and we're ready to move on, you don't have to just say, well, I'm, I can only teach this in November. No, you can move, move them right along, right? Um, so I just want to make that clear as well. But yes, we, um, you'll see that it was, it's, there's still a lot to teach, but um, we got that same message before. It seems a little more spread out, a little bit more time. All right, anyone else from room two? All right, we'll go to room three. Um, Amy, Gabe, Gabe, Jimmy, and Joan. I kind of noticed the time thing too. Um, it just seemed like last year the units they would say like 45 days and then in some units they say oh you do one or two days for this and then three or four days for that and it just seemed like 
it was broken down really clearly like, okay, well, you know, let's do two weeks for this and let's do four weeks for that. But as you just said, if your kids have mastered it, you can kind of move them along and maybe jump into some of those additional and supporting standards if you haven't already incorporated them. Yes, perfect. Thank you, Joan. And how about room four? So that was Gina, Misty, and Surema. We said that um, it was pretty like, we basically said everything everyone else said. It's mm -hmm. neat, it's quite easy to follow. We saw that for a new teacher, this would be really easy to just follow along. So it was very explicit. And as a new teacher, I feel like I would be, I would be so appreciated of what and how it's laid out. And then not taking into consideration where like, oh, the for the first, what is it? The first two weeks, talking about two seventh weeks, grade. Kind of two weeks. Yeah, so let's review the seventh grade to see where the kids are off because of everything that happened. And then from there, we can see where we can plug in the eighth grade standards. Yeah, and we chose um, ratios and proportional relationships because it's something that they have learned in sixth grade and in seventh grade, just so you guys know, they start the school year with those standards mm -hmm. and uh, those concepts and they fit nicely with functions, right? Because really there are P's in sixth, there are P's in seventh are building them for functions. And so Kenneth thought that would be a great place to review and get them you know, I, I like how you said today, but like just even checking where they are, what's their knowledge, what are they bringing with them? So, and what you might have to spend a little more time on versus what you don't need to spend as much time on. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you. And then uh, breakout room five, Janelle, Michael, and it says uh, T-E-R. So I'm not sure, is that Ter? Ter? Terry, thank you. <laughs> Sorry. I'm like, I don't know how to say that. Okay, Terry. All right, so Janelle, Michael, or Terry, would you like to share if there's anything you want to add? The one thing I do like, and it, it's the breakdown of the timeline of how we're supposed to go and follow through. That does it makes it really nice because then you don't spend too much time on something you don't need. Also, one nice thing for me, because I do, uh, I have a combined class. I have SPED and I have general education. Makes it real nice, especially for the SPED teacher. I can go through and say, these are the standards, so it'll help with writing IEPs and things for us. That part I really do like, instead of having to dig through all of that. Yeah, and I, so I hope all of you noticed that the standards were like um, broken down into maybe skills, if you want to call it. Um, you know, some people say deconstruct the standard, but we did look at the item specifications and the California math framework. Um, and we did this K through eighth, you know, um, <clears throat> our littles don't have item specs, but we still looked at any resource we could to try to make sense of the standard. You're not limited to what we've bulleted out for you. I mean, you might find that there's more prerequisites or more things that they need to pull out, but we, we were hoping that that would be helpful in um, designing lessons, trying to just trying to be helpful in taking maybe some of those decisions you always have to make in your PLCs that um, could just make it a little bit easier for you, if that makes sense. All right, well, thank you guys so much for participating in our breakout room. Um, so that document will be available on our website as well, and um, we'll show that you that at the end of our session. Okay, um, let me get back to these, this document. So I'd like to give you guys a three minute break right now. And as you take your break, we're gonna have two quotes up on the screen for you. you get this to present mode. And so, um, yeah, so we'll take a three minute break, we'll come back, but if you could read those two quotes and if there's anything that resonates with you while you read these quotes and you want to share, just put it in our chat box, okay? So we will see you guys in about three minutes.
Okay, welcome back. Hopefully that was about three minutes. Um, if you put anything in the chat, we will do our best to answer it. So I think somebody had a question about the um, seventh grade essential standards. Those are linked on the actual slides, um, but it will also you can also find those in um, the EdTech Center, the website. Okay, so they are there are there is a different document for that for each grade level. Um, all right, so hopefully you had a chance to read these quotes. These two quotes um, really have resonated with us. Um, and so I'm just gonna read them before we move on. Uh, Learning to stand in somebody else's shoes to see through their eyes, that's how peace begins. And it's up to you to make that happen. Empathy is a quality of character that can change the world. And that was by uh, former President Barack Obama. Um, but what we loved about it is just the, the, the uh, attention to peace and the attention to empathy. Um, especially during this time as we enter um, a new a new way of teaching. It's just um, reminding us to see, um, to have empathy um, as we see the world through others' eyes. Um, and then Mother Teresa's quote, it's not about how much you do, but how much love you put into what you do that counts. And we also felt this quote was really relevant um, because it was, at times you might feel a little inadequate um, we're not, we're used to doing certain things and we're not doing those things. Um, but really, it's just about how much love you put into what you do. And just remember that that same passion you've had always when you, you know, when you go into teaching, there's this real excitement and this real joy that you're able to continue with that excitement, that joy and that love and that passion that you have for teaching and for the students. So with that said, um, We've included on this slide an article for you. Um, the article, um, it's about five pages. It's actually a very, very easy read. However, we went ahead and took um, some of the ideas from that article and listed them here for you in this slide. And really it's about, okay, how do we communicate in such a way that we're able to make connections that then we're able to build relationships? That's really what the article's about and how important those relationships are. Um, and not just with uh, the students, but also with parents, family, community, and even your own school culture. So there are some items here that have, or ideas that have been listed for you. And I just wanted to pay, uh, bring attention to the parades, chalk writing, and book readings. Um, because I, I just, I, it made me feel so good. I got to participate in one of the parades, um, but many of you did, and you were able to drive your neighborhoods as a, parade style um, with other teachers, other, you know, with your admin even, and you decorated your cars and you drove by those neighborhoods, you honked, you waved, and I'm going to tell you, I was able to participate for McKinley, and um, it was just such a great feeling, because I think what you do is you're, you're letting them know, I see you, I haven't forgotten about you, you matter to me, you know, you're important to me, and I'm taking this time to see you. So, um, Something as simple as a car parade makes the world of difference in the lives of a child. So um, kudos to, to everyone that participated. And I think if you were on Facebook or social media, you got to see some videos. And if you weren't able to participate, just watching the videos uh, really just brought a good feeling. So this idea of engagement is going to be so important in the virtual learning setting. Um, because it's also what's going to motivate our kids to show up each and every day. So um, definitely this uh, reading that we provided you with, I would look through it with the uh, your professional learning communities, but also just with the lens of how am I going to build the best culture and community when my kids are not right in front of me? And it can it can be done. All right, so this is the part that um, is, is kind of exciting for us. This is the part that the team worked on just, I mean, we're talking day and night, day, day and night, K through eighth, working on lessons. Um, there are sample lessons. So what that means is you can look at this lesson and you can take 10% of it. You can take 50%. You can take the whole thing. You can take none of it. It's really up to you and what's going to serve your students um, best. So what you're going to find when we actually um, get you to the, the website, you'll find a cover page uh, for each of the modules. The cover pages 
We'll just give you an overview of what's included in this module. Um, we've also included the item specification, so you know what is the expectation, um, and then the lessons at a glance that are in this module. Um, all your lessons are going to include those things that are commonly discussed in a PLC. So um, we've listed those things there. Um, we've also given you a slide with just very, very brief descriptions, very brief descriptions of those same items that you'll find. Um, and I just want to bring to attention that the learning intentions and success criteria has already been written for you. Um, but please, please feel free to meet with your PLCs. Um, depending on what part of the lesson you use, change those learning intentions and success criteria so that they do indeed meet the expectations you have for your students or what your goals are for them, okay? So this is what you'll find in the lesson. And so what we're gonna do right now is take you through a sample lesson, all right? So um, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen and I think, well actually, Give me a second, sorry. I think, Brandy, you're gonna model the number talks, right? But I'm gonna use paint to try to- switch. Yes, yes, okay. so you can you can keep your, you can keep okay. sharing. That's fine. Okay. Um, so as Hilda said, here's the, here's an example of one of the lessons. Um, it has all of the components that she shared, learning intention, success, success criteria, the skills, uh, vocabulary, sentence frames, it has an introduction, um, some type of opening or warm up to do with the kids, it has the lesson, it has the closing. Um, and at the bottom, we tried to give you some possible resources to go with the lesson. Um, again, these are just suggested, you do not have to use these. Um, and you can mix and match and use them on different days when you want to. But we just wanted to provide you with enough as a springboard to get you started. Um, again, you're going to be making decisions with your PLCs as far as what you use, what you like, how you frame your lessons. Uh, and it's going to take some adjustment because we're going to be doing 90 minute classes uh, and we're going to only see those kids every other day. So teaching is going to look different online. Uh, so that being said, we chose for this particular one. Oh, and each each lesson also has uh, the presentation slides that uh, provide the presentation for uh, the direct instruction portion. So this the this lesson was created with a numbers talk. Um, if you have not done a number talks before, it's going to look slightly different on a computer. Um, and through a Zoom, but it's definitely doable. It goes over, this presentation goes over um, how to set things up, the behaviors that you're looking for from the kids, reminding them of um, that we're a community and we're gonna be kind to each other and we're not gonna make nasty comments and the different number or the different signals, uh, which again, it's gonna look a little bit different. So here's the two questions that you're going to, Sorry. okay, here's the two questions that you're going to answer. Uh, how many dots do you see? And then how do you see them? So Hilda is going to show you really quickly a number talks for Wednesday. And again, your two questions are how many do you see and how do you see them? So it's going to be very quick. So the what I want you to put in the chat is you're going, and I want you to put it to just me. So I want you to set your chat up right now where it's just going to send it to me. Um, so you're going to put how many dots do you see? That So you're just gonna put the number, number of dots. That's all I want from you. And again, you're just sending it to me personally and I'll tell you why in a minute. All right, so is everybody ready to go? It's gonna be super quick, so pay attention. Okay, Hilda. Okay, so in the chat right now, how many did you see?
Christy, I'm still waiting for an answer from you, please. You may want to take it off of, uh, or put it in present because you can see it on the side. Yeah. Hilda. Yes, take, I will. Take it. Oh. A flip to a different. Oh, I thought I was in a different one. Okay, sorry. That's okay. <laughs> I had pulled up paint already, but I'm obviously not sharing that screen. I've got to stop share. Okay. There you go. Okay. So the reasoning behind why I asked you to send it to just me is because if you send it to everyone, then you're giving away the answer to everyone in the chat, right? So when you send it to just me as the teacher, um, again, you're, you're doing this from the student perspective. I, as the teacher can number one, I can check and see who has, who has submitted the answer and who has not. Um, so notice that I asked Christy if she could please send me hers. So I'm making, I'm holding everybody accountable to answering the question, number one. Number two, because I'm the only one that can see, it's going to force everybody to be engaged. They're not gonna get to opt out. Now, we learned this from the last time that we presented. So we didn't even think about that. And then somebody mentioned, oh, well, if you didn't want, you know, cause somebody said, well, once one or two kids answer, they see the answer, they're just gonna type in what everybody else put in the chat. And then you, how do you really know that they got it? And I'm like, that's good, didn't think about that. Again, learning by doing. So by having you answer to just me, I'm the only one that can see your answers, nobody else can see them. So it's not, there's, that issue gets taken away. Um, you could decide if you want them to have access to people, maybe if it's to other people's answers, maybe if it's the first or second time they're doing it, go ahead and let them put it in the chat to everyone. But then eventually you could get to the point where they just give it to you. All right, so um, thank you everyone for participating. So now what you're going to do, I'm gonna call on a couple of people and I would like you to explain to Hilda, how did you see the number that you gave me? How did you see the dots that you said you saw? Um, so let's go with Surema. Can you please share with Hilda? How did you see them? And she's going to, she's using paint and she's going to, that's like a whiteboard. So this is her tool. Okay, so the way I saw it was three, four, three. I noticed that the left and the right were mirrored from each other. Um, so I just doubled three and three, six plus the four in the middle were 10. How did you see the four in the middle? Uh, two and two, so doubled. Okay. So two on top, two on the bottom. I think I'm second guessing myself now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Nice. Very good. Thank you for sharing. Yes. Uh, Michael, how did you see the number that you shared? You also put 10. So I saw it as, I saw it as three, two, two, three. So broke it in half. Basically, it's a pyramid, two pyramids without the top. So you could have done three, two, one, and subtracted two at the end. Huh. I like it. So yeah, I guess you could do it two ways. Three, two, plus two, plus three, or three, two, one, and then subtract two at the end. So hold on, the three, Two. So I would have had three plus two plus one, and then three plus two plus one, all add it all up, and it would have given me 12. And since it's a pyramid, but it's missing its top point, I would have taken away two at the very end to still get 10. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm not sure I can draw that all, but yes, I get you. Awesome. <laughs> Sorry. Well, well, one of the nice things is like if you have a writing tablet, then obviously, you know, I could write and keep up, but I'm using the mouse right now. You can see my numbers got a little better, um, but um, yeah, so, or if you have your camera, your little Elmo, your um, document camera, you might be able mm -hmm. to hook that up to your laptop and then write things, script them out so kids can see it. So just a couple little tips. 
I drew it, but it's not dark enough. Gotcha. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, and that's another thing, Michael, and that's a good point for everyone in this room. Um, we've done a lot of sessions now, and I've seen some people teaching um, where the students will show their work, like a whiteboard, right? But they use a piece of paper or something, but it, you want them to use a marker or something that's definitely brighter because it is, you know, they've done all this beautiful work and they're like, here, can you see? Can't see so it. Just, a, just a tip for you and the students as well. Yeah, a marker or, or a dark crayon, if they have a crayon be a good idea too. Uh, let's go with one more. Hopefully you saw it different. Um, let's go with Amy. Amy also got to unmute. I saw um, a square in the middle and then the two lines on the other side. So I saw the four first and then the threes um, on each side. Perfect. And I said three plus three is six plus four is 10. So the beauty of paint is I can, so right now Hilda has control of the screen. I can go down to, or I can go up to the top of my screen and next to where it says you are viewing Hilda right screen, it has view options. If you click on that tab, and you go down to annotate, which should be the third option that you have, and you click on it, it now gives me access to her paint, and I can go in and I can add how I saw it, and then Hilda doesn't have to worry about doing it for me. Mm -hmm. um, and the cool thing is it has stamps. So I can put a stamp I, I have a question. Yes. Are, are you guys both monitors to it? Because I could go in and do it too. And I would think that I wouldn't want the whole class to be able to go in and do it. Is right, that a way right, to right, assign right. certain people? Yes. So yes, definitely. Okay. Um, and, and you could maybe put in the chat, you know, Joan, Jennifer, and Michael, I want you to go in click the top where it says view options. I want you to click annotate and I want you to put in how you saw it. And yeah, but that's you telling them, but is there a way to, to control it? Because what do you mean? Like you're, you're saying you would suggest three students to do it, but I'm thinking all of my students will do it at the same time. I teach a special mm -hmm. ed class. So can I only give permission to certain students to, to annotate? I don't that's believe. That's a great question. Don't Will know. you put it in our district question, Amy, because okay. um, in the parking lot, if you wouldn't mind, it's a great question. We don't, we yeah. don't know. Okay. No, that's yeah, I mean, I'm question. sure that's the stuff we'll find out as, as we try, but I, I could see not being disobedient, just being, but like, oh, I can do it too. I, I'll show you, you know, I know you asked Johnny, but I'm going to do it, you know. Agreed. That's why I was, I suggested the, the possibility of just reaching out to those three personal students and saying, can you please go in and follow these directions and put your work in there. And then it would be just to them. So I would just send Joan a message. And then I would just send Michael the same message. So, but that's a great question. And I would love to know the answer to that for sure. So we just wanted you to see the possibilities that are available. Um, kind of cool, kind of fun, something new, something different. So, Hopefully, hopefully this is, we're getting your wheels spinning on some possible things that you can do. All right, Hilda, you're on. All right, so I'm just going to um, get us back. Um, give me just a second. So I'm gonna move us into the next part of the lesson, which would be Nana's paint mix up. So today we're gonna to do a task. And um, some of you may be familiar with Nana's paint mix up. It's uh, really one of our favorite tasks. Um, just kind of get kids engaged and allows all of them to come into the problem. So I'm gonna show you a video and I just want you to think about what you notice and what do you wonder. So I'll put the volume on. It's a, um, it doesn't have, I don't even know if it has words. I think it's texting. It, you're gonna read it. So um, let me open this up and let me get to my share screen. Oops. 
Um, all right. And just let me know if you can't hear it, because that's going to be, um, you really can't hear much. It's like you have to read, but. Okay, so hopefully you saw that question at the very end, is it too late? So um, I'll just kind of restate what the problem is. Um, it looks like Dan is getting ready to mix some paint for his grandma and she said she wanted to mix one red and was it five white? Yeah, five white. And you saw him do that and he mixes it up. And then Nana says, oh, wait, wait. I had it backwards. It was one white and five red. So um, the question is, can you fix this? Can you fix this? So what we have in the presentation is like a what do you notice and what do you wonder in the presentation. I took that and created my own Google Doc or I think it was a slide. So one of the things you want to do when you go through the lessons is you're going to want to create some of your own things um, because like the presentations view only, we can't all type in that, right? If everyone's using the task. So um, just, just be mindful, like you're gonna want to either open up Jamboard and have a whiteboard and then just write responses or you can create a slide deck, okay? Or whatever, whatever you want. I mean, the really it's gonna be uh, endless what all the options are you have. So give me a second as I get back to where I want to be. Um, I cannot quit my video. Hold on. Okay. Woo, I made it back. So I'm going to share my screen in just a second. Sorry about that. I just need to get back to where I needed. So this is what I mean by I created like, what do you notice? What do you wonder? Okay. It's part of the lesson presentation, but I created my own. So that way I could write the responses from this group. So, so if you can unmute yourself and just kind of tell me, what did you notice? I could do this a different way. I could just have you put responses in the chat, um, but just from our time right now that we have, I, if you could just unmute yourself and tell me, what did you notice about the video? What do you notice? I was wondering how many cans of paint they actually bought. Okay, so I'm gonna kind of come over here to what do you wonder? So how many uh, cans of paint, okay, were bought? What I noticed is they didn't use both initial cans completely. I noticed he was really sloppy. <laughs> yeah. Yes. One of the beautiful things about this is you want to accept all responses. You want to give kids voice. If they notice that he was really sloppy, you write it. He used the same measuring spoon for each color. Yeah, people had issues with that last time we showed this last week. I was just going to say he mixed, there was red in the white after. What was that again? I'm sorry. Since he used both spoons, there ended up being red in the white can left residue from the scooper from his uh, measuring spoon. 
Exactly. Mm -hmm. I noticed there wasn't very much paint in the tray when he was done. So they didn't, he apparently thought he didn't need to mix much. Like he's only painting something small, maybe. Right. It was a small amount of paint. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He didn't mix it all the way either. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's not a very good mixer, is he? <laughs> <laughs> he would not be hired. <laughs> didn't mix very good. I hope that makes sense. All right, so what do we know? What do we wonder now? So how many cans of paint were bought? Um, what do we wonder? Obviously, we wonder, I'm just going to put the question, which is, can we fix this? What else might you wonder? Um, does he have another container to mix in? Or does he only have one container? Okay. What are they painting? Okay. These are good questions because those are the things like that's the problem solving and reasoning and that's kind of the questions we want kids to ask, right? Like these things matter. So what else? Yeah, if it's not that much paint. Add on. Joan, what did you say, Joan? Over. Rather than okay, so fixing it, could he just start over? Okay, can we just start over? Can we just start over? Okay. All right, and then I thought I heard another voice. Yeah, if the amount of paint didn't seem that much, if he could just turn the bin, the paint bin over and just start over that way. So it's kind of similar to Joan's question. Okay. All right. Christy, I think I'm gonna said, oh, okay. go ahead. Christy said she wonders how much paint is he going to need in total? That was mine too. Great this mind. part Thank is like, you don't want to, you don't want to skip this part in a task, right? Like you want to be able to hear kids say, what are they noticing? What are they wondering? And it's kind of helping shape how they're going to enter the problem, how they're going to jump in, solve and make decisions. So um, this is an important part. Okay. So with that said, what I'm going to do is um, I want you to go into breakout rooms and I want you to, um, come up with um, a way to fix this problem, okay? And we also want you to fill out a table, okay? But the table will be um, based off of the information we were given by Nana. What would be some other um, equivalent ratios that would work, all right? So one is to fix it. How are you gonna fix it? But then using Nana's information, how could you um, oh, my phone's going to die. I mean, my, my computer. Hold on one second. <laughs> <laughs> the joys of technology. We don't want that to happen, you guys. I, I'm sorry. I, I'm at the district office today, and I had to move downstairs, and um, I didn't plug in my... Oh, it's okay. great, but it works. We're good. We're good. Whew. I looked down, and I thought, oh, my goodness. So I'm gonna put you into breakout rooms. Um, I'm just gonna give you but a few minutes, but I am gonna give you a, um, let me see. Okay, so you're gonna have this with you and Brandy, if you could put this in the chat box, this is um, in yep, the notes. Got it. All right, so if you could put your names, is it possible to fix the mix up? And if you say yes, if you can provide us, how are you gonna do that? And then we've taken Nana's information, one white to five red. Can you write a few more equivalent um, ratios there? And then we will come back. I'm not gonna give you much time because there is another part I really want us to do. So I'm gonna give you about three minutes, okay? So I'm gonna put you into your breakout rooms. Uh, please use the chat box to get to that, those slides that we want you to fill out the table in, okay? All right, here we go. It's not very long, but I need to bring you back so we can use Desmos.
you know, a change. All right, welcome back everyone from breakout rooms. Um, I know that probably wasn't a lot of time. We obviously would want to give our kids more time. Um, but um, I'm hoping you can see the value of how you can create um, slides like this and kids can input their thinking, their reasoning, and you can check their understanding this way. All right. So right now I'm just going to look at one example right here. It says, um, this is Aaron, Brandy, Candace, and Haley. Again, keeping you, holding you accountable by making you write your names. Is it possible to fix the mix up? They said we would need to add 24 reds to fix the mix to the proper ratio of five to 25. Mm -hmm. And then they filled out their table. Uh, looks like uh, pretty standard in, um, yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six. And then they showed the different ratios. One of the nice things too is that you have different examples that kids can go through and interact with the different examples and make comparisons what's similar, what's different, and you, they can have conversations around that. And it's okay if you didn't get through all of them. Um, we saw, here's another explanation. Um, yes, it is. He can multiply five times five, use the chart, and he needs 24 more red to get to five white, white and 25 red. And what you're going to find is that your kids, as they use these tools, they're going to begin to elaborate and articulate their language um, better each and every time um, you expect this from them um, because at first they may not give you notice and wonders but let me tell you within a week or two they can't stop giving you notices and wonders right so remember it's the opportunities you provide that will help shape how they use their voices um, so what I'm going to do now is show you how you can take this information and in Desmos you can use Desmos to do the entire rule of four. And the rule of four, you know, we've talked about that, gosh, maybe the last five years or so. It's um, really multiple representations of uh, functions and proportional relationships uh, that we use in sixth, seventh, and eighth. Um, and we know that kids may not have access to graph paper or the rule of four sheet that we usually give them. But what's so beautiful is Desmond does it all. Okay, the only thing it doesn't do is the verbal, the, the written description. You can see I wrote it um on my screen but uh it's not meant for text it's not meant for me to write but i still did and i got you're not sharing it. your screen brand oh shoot i'm so sorry <laughs> oh, my God. I, did. I didn't realize that that's what you needed to do until you said it right now <laughs> okay i'm so that's sorry about that you no, guys. all good um, there you go okay because i was even showing your graphs and reading your responses and i thought that was all on your screen all right so this is Desmos, and what I've done is I've already inputted the table, and when you input the table with your values, it automatically graphed the points, and then I created an equation, something kids have done in seventh grade. It's also part of their, you know, standards in eighth grade and looking at the multiple ways to represent functions. And then I wrote, and that's what I meant right there, I wrote for every one white, there are five red. Uh, it's not meant to be a text box, but we've been able to get away with writing text in it. So we've been using it that way. Um, sometimes it wants to change your letters to math symbols. So just know that. And if, and if you don't choose that feature, that's fine. You don't have to write the verbal. I could write the verbal somewhere else. But one of the things I love is once kids create this, you can take a screenshot, uh, take the snipping tool, or share it with you. There's an option to just share the graph and they'll send a link. So when you want them to turn in their work or turn in an assignment into the Google Classroom, you can do that. What I've done is I just went ahead and snipped it and I added it into a slide. So it's like this, this group or this child just turned in their work. I'm able to see the table that they came up with. I'm able to see the graph. Um, they will know if their equation is incorrect, that graph won't be a perfect line. You know, and we saw that last week, uh, some errors being made and you could see that the, the points were off or the line was off. And then that's another way for them to check when they're making a mistake or it, and it could be a simple mistake in their table or, you know, just how they input it. So with that said, um, I'm going to send you back to your breakout rooms. Um, we don't have too, too much time, but I want to send you back into your breakout Hmm, I'm thinking, sorry, I'm thinking for a second. Um, I'm not sure if everyone here is familiar with Desmos. I wanted to send you back into the breakout 
Um, what you can at least do is create your table in Desmos, so you can at least see that. In the plus up here, this little plus symbol, when you click there, you can in insert a table. So if you could insert your table, at least look at the dots, okay, and how they automatically um, graph for you. And if you're able to come up with the equation, that would be great, all right? So I'm gonna give you one problem. We're gonna put it into your, um, into the chat. And this is gonna require one of you in the breakout room to pull up Desmos and graph the table, your table of values, okay? So your problem is Angel purchased some cheeseburgers for his family. He paid $35 for five cheeseburgers. How much did one cheeseburger cost? So create your table, write an equation. We're gonna skip the part where you're gonna uh, snip it and share it with us. We're gonna skip that part, but that is what you would want students to do. You'd want them to share that graph and table with you to just check their understanding. So we're gonna send you into breakout rooms. And um, again, three minutes with a one minute countdown and one of you will have to open up Desmos. I will um, jump into the rooms to help as well. All right, here we go. All right, welcome back, everybody. Um, we are well aware that that's not enough time. You know, we would have to do like our own Desmos training session, which I kind of hope that we will have a chance to do. Um, same with Padlet, same with Jamboard, um, breakout rooms. There's so much, um, there's just so, so many of us are at different places, right? So some of us feel very comfortable with Desmos and we're experts with Desmos and we can move in and out of Desmos. And some of us are seeing it for the very first time, okay? Um, definitely reach out if you need some help and support. But today we just wanted to kind of show you the very basic things it can do. It's a free graphing calculator. You can insert a table. The table automatically graphs and the only question I was able to hear from one of the breakout rooms was, you know, how do we create that line? Well, there's other ways you can play with Desmos so that the dots are connected. But if you want to see the line, a full like line function that's extended, you want to read that equation. Um, I think, um, I think it was Rosie who was saying like, kids can really see how things are connected within it, right? The table, the equation, the graph. But definitely one of the things is they can see if they're making mistakes. So if they are making a mistake, they can change that slope, they can change that unit rate and see how the line moves. I mean, there's, there's so much power in using Desmos for multiple representations, okay? And had we had a little more time, which of course, you're gonna have 90 minutes with your students. I mean, 
we feel like that's a blessing, but it's only every other day. So uh, the suggestion we're giving is two lessons per day um, because the lessons are just, they say lesson one, lesson two, we did have them by day initially, but that was before we knew we were gonna go 100% virtually. Um, but we've been asked a lot like, well, how many do we do a day or do we just do one lesson? It's really, each lesson was written for like a 45 minute period. So I would look at two lessons if you're considering using the lessons that have been um, designed. Take two of them, look at them, and then just pull the parts that you like, you know, and that you need, and that you think will meet the goals for your kids that day, all right? So I hope you enjoy Desmos while you're in there a little bit. Again, like I said, maybe in the future we'll have like a two-hour training. We'll just do Desmos, and we'll just talk about what you're doing. Um, but we really do appreciate you engaging with us today. So with that said, we're going to wrap things up here. Let me get us back. And this question is just leaving you to ponder right now, what part of the lesson would you use in your classroom? Because those are the decisions we're going to um, ask that you make. Look at a lesson and then what will you use? And that is the question you need to ask yourself as you go through these lessons. And the Egg Tech Center is our last portion and I know it's just a few minutes that we're giving you. But in this Egg Tech Center, um, it was developed over the summer by a phenomenal team of teachers and ed tech leaders. And it's kind of like a one-stop shop, if you could call it that. Um, off to the left, you'll see, you know, you have the lessons by grade and whatnot. So you have this, um, I don't know what it's called, but off to the left, just like a little menu, or a little menu. Menu. menu, thank you. Um, and then right here, you have some of the little icons. So I'm gonna go into the grade level lessons. That's the part we wanna show you today. When you go into the grade level lessons, you'll see that everything's by grade. I'm gonna click into eighth. And when I go to eighth, you can click on math. And so when you get into the math section, what you're gonna find um, is an example eighth grade math class. So the Google Classroom is an example. But you'll find some of those things. You'll find the um, key central standard document. You'll also find our units because our units, once they're updated, they will say 2019 to 2021 because the units are not changing. We will only maybe add some things, but all the standards will be still, still be there. All the resources will still be there. Um, we heard from a lot of teachers like, please don't change those. We really love that we can grab certain things that we've always grabbed, you know, and we don't want the tasks to go away or certain things to go away. So those are there. Um, I believe we're also gonna be adding your California math framework on this page as well. So key central standards units in your California math framework. And then when you scroll down, you'll see all your modules. So module one is lessons one through five. Module um, one, lesson six through 10, and module two and module two. So just so you know, module one is all review. So that those are going to be the ratios and proportional relationship standards and lessons. And then when module two starts, that's really going into functions. Okay. And then you just click and you'll get the lesson plan that Brandy and I showed you. And if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask, you know, just click on everything that's linkable. That's what I always say, just click on everything. But if you need more guidance, please, that's what we are here for. Okay. And just know that the framework and the units are also linked in the key essential standards document that we looked at earlier. So, and, um, and I think Brandy's gonna put in the link for your sign out and she'll put the link for the email. Already done. And then okay, I'll put the presentation you. link again, um, just so that you guys have it. Yes. And I wish I had Please more time make with sure you fill out both. Yes, definitely wanna do your sign out sheet. And EdTech Center, um, I'll just say one last thing. It's This is going to be where you find videos and tutorials, um, how-tos. Um, if you're looking for how to do this, how to do that, I don't know what, you know, just it's all created for teachers to help guide you in this work, okay? And we thank you again. Um, there's a couple pages with resources at the end. That we added the virtual resources. That was found on Twitter, I believe. Those lots are super cool, you guys. Check them out. Of virtual resources for you to use, all right? So again, thank you, thank you, thank you. And I want to give one final shout out to the team that helped this summer put all this together. I mean, we could not have done it without them. And I know they worked endless hours, day, night, middle of the night, 
So, but we thank you and we thank you for um, all the service you give to our teachers, um, to our students, to your families, and just know that we're all in this together and give yourself grace and give us all some grace because we definitely need it. All right, we'll see you guys. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. So Hilda, if you're still host, if you click on uh, the dots by the person's name with the, the blue, you should What's be that? able to you should be able to uh, disable the, the annotation. That's what I was just gonna tell you. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Thank you. And Hilda, do you want to stop the recording? Um yes, I would love to. Give me just a second. <laughs> I mean, love to isn't just yes, of course. Uh, uh. But let me let me get over here and stop it. Do you want to stop?